simply, WebAssembly is just another bytecode format. So if you've ever done any programming in Java, you're going to be familiar with this kind of mental model of what is a bytecode. So in the world of Java, you've got your Java program, and you want to do something with that program, so you're going to compile that program. And traditionally, with something like C or Rust, you would compile that directly down to the machine code that would execute on the machine. But in Java, you're going to compile that down to this kind of intermediate bytecode format. So this Java bytecode represents your Java program, but is not directly executable by the underlying hardware that you want to run it on. So what do you do with this bytecode? Well, you have something called the Java Virtual Machine, the JVM, which is able to execute that bytecode and produce your desired result of you know, printing Hello World or whatever your program is going to do. And so that's how the bytecode is actually executed. And then we get sort of kind of a cross-platform, cross-architecture portability here with the JVM, because so long as you have a version of the JVM that's compiled to run on ARM and one that's built to run on x86 and Windows and Mac OS, all of a sudden you've compiled your bytecode once, your Java program once, and you're able to run it and execute it on any one of these platforms. Now, WebAssembly is just like this. It's kind of a bytecode model. So you take your program that you want to compile to WebAssembly, you use a compiler, and you compile that down to a WebAssembly bytecode this time instead of a Java bytecode. And then with the WebAssembly bytecode, you then are able to execute it on a WES runtime, which is kind of the equivalent to the JVM. And again, the same kind of story of the runtime supporting multiple different architectures here.